Go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, my name is Muhammad Sherry, Muhammad Sherry. Um, I am currently a stay-at-home father of two wonderful children, Mehdi, four years old, and Abbas, uh, one and a half years old. So, I'm pretty exhausted, as you can tell, but I've managed to escape and, uh, and make it to this evening, this wonderful evening. Um, I'm a former community organizer. I worked in Southwest Detroit, where um, we worked with the community to figure out what they needed and uh, tried to meet those goals. I also uh, work with uh, different community activists and organizers in Flint and several of the indigenous communities here in Michigan, Native American communities. And also, uh, I, was, I got reactivated and reinserted into activism uh, through the actions of the uh, Native Americans and their allies at Standing Rock, where they were protesting the pipeline over there. And uh, that kind of took me out of my uh, sort of non-involvement, and I got involved again. And uh, it's been hard since, since working with different communities that all have different struggles. It, it, there's, there's a lot of hurt and a lot of pain and a lot of trauma. It's exhausting, day in and day out. So, I wanted to write something to dedicate to the water protectors. Who here is familiar with the water protectors? Just one person. Just Brian. us two. Just two. <laughs> Three. So, Three. Four. Hey. Three. Oh, four. Oh. Okay, great. So, and that's actually deliberate that you don't know about them. And that's because uh, there wasn't that much media coverage on what happened in the Dakotas. Where this is. is it all right if I share with you what happened? Because I feel it's a For sure. yes. very important. So there was an oil pipeline that uh, the Dakota Access Pipeline that was going to be built in the Dakotas, and instead of putting it through the initial city of Bismarck where it was supposed to go, they moved it over right next to the river where the Native Americans, the Sioux specifically, the Dakota, Lakota, and the Nakota, they get their water from there. And these pipelines are notorious for being unsafe. You know, they leak. And this pipeline wasn't just next to the river, it was gonna go under the river, under their water source. So, and also through their sacred land, through where their ancestors are buried. And those are just a few of the things that they were upset about, righteously upset about. And so they decided to do a mass protest. And in the process of protesting, the uh, government unleashed all its power including private uh, companies, private security companies, which they use overseas to fight terrorism. They brought them here and they used them against the Native American people and their allies. So when they went up there peacefully praying, they really did that. They just went up there, they prayed, and they, they asked them to just move away and stop. They unleashed less than lethal force lethally on them. And they, uh, at one point, also sent the National Guard. There's a long drama that unfolded just a few years ago, and only a few of us heard about it. So it isn't enough that they violated the treaties and they continued to violate the treaties against them, but here they sent the army to go and shoot at them, to shoot at American citizens as well that were with them there. And uh, a lot of people were hurt very badly. A lot of my friends now face charges, federal charges, that they can't take off their record and their freedom for standing up for their water and for their beliefs are now lost potentially forever. And a lot of them, because they didn't believe in the, in the process, you know, they, they don't really, they don't go through the same process that we all go through. So they end up giving up and making deals. So instead of getting 15 years in jail, I'll do maybe five years, maybe I'll do three years, but it's still three to five years of your life that's gone away from your family and away from your loved ones. So, they call themselves not protesters, they call themselves protectors. They're protecting the water. So I wrote a little tribute to the water protectors. One of my friends, um, her relative is a little uh, Native American girl. She went to the UN and she spoke recently. And I saw a picture of her. I want to share with you this picture. You can see her, hopefully. Tell me if it turns off. Well, you can see her, she's carrying a little copper cup and she's doing a prayer for the water. 
in the Dakotas they had a saying and it became a slogan for the movement. It was Mini Uchoni, which means water is life. And because it's, it's, it's not only gives us life, but everything, everything is connected in a way. And so to them it's sacred, more sacred than I guess I could possibly comprehend. I don't even understand it and I won't even attempt to, to explain it. But I wanted to give a tribute because this picture moved me right here and it shook me in a sense to get out of my 10 year rut of not writing anything. So right after I declined this spam call, I'll leave this to you. Spam likely? Yeah. That's something young and ridiculous. I'm so sorry, what was your name again? Muhammad. Okay. Yeah, Muhammad. A tribute to the water warrior. Your heart cries out to eyes turned away. Dismissed, unessential, my dear. What's dearer to us than for what you pray? Hearts clouded, darkened by the notions of today, make precious values of what pummels us into decay. Sweet are your heart throbs, pulsing lifeblood into lifeless forms of clay, like newborn grass blades piercing through a seemingly barren, lifeless plain. Protecting that which gives form to teardrops and soothing trickling rain, cleansing broken hearts steeped and heavy with dismay. Each sweat drop, my dear, a righteous invocation, releasing parched souls from self-inflicting, agonizing pain. Clear the way, O oh righteous warrior. Give true meaning back to our name. Thank you.